Time is growing short, and the number of ADSB out install slots is dwindling. Manufacturers and maintenance depots say it's time to innovate. From the National Business Aviation Association, this is Flight Plan. Pete Combs with your trusted source for business aviation news. New Year's Day 2020 isn't that far away. That's when the FAA has mandated installation of ADSB out capabilities in all aircraft flying in controlled airspace. That mandate was issued back in 2010. Robert Randall at Universal Avionics, what's happened on the manufacturing end of this equation since then? People were kind of slow to, to gear up, and at that time we were able to meet demand. And starting about fourth quarter of last year, people started ramping up and our dealers started doing more and more installs. It put a crunch on us to get product that we have to have to build our product to deliver to our dealers and customers. So the crunch is definitely real and we're doing all we can to meet the mandate and requirements for our dealers, but the, the crunch is definitely there. And so it has resulted in longer lead time for our product getting out to the dealers. Mark Francetic is in charge of business development at SoCal Jets Incorporated out of Van Nuys, California. He says for MROs that install ADSB out solutions, there's a growing problem as well when it comes to meeting that January 1, 2020 deadline. The total number of compliant small aircraft and business jet aircraft, I think, was 110,000. We're at about 52% compliance right now, which part of that is probably close to 10,000 Part 25 jets, if we're talking the jet market alone. 52% compliance. That means the owners of more than 57,000 airplanes in this country still have to complete the installation. And that number doesn't include helicopters or aircraft from other countries that will operate in the U.S. after 2020. Robert Roy, founder of SoCal Jets Incorporated, says that presents a tremendous challenge to owners and installers. The challenges we face and what the operators have to face is scheduling. So when people request a quote, they need to get authorization and a deposit out immediately because of what Robert Randall stated is the equipment requirements. And actually, Universal has stepped up their delivery dates significantly. We've benefited from that. But we're telling customers that once a deposit is received, we place the order and ordering equipment to allow six, seven weeks to get all the equipment in. That's been the big push right here. And then the other thing is, of course, how fast the schedule is. So the one good benefit there is is that we are a full-service repair station, so we do maintenance, avionics, we get interior work done, we do minor paint touch-up. So if people are planning a, a big event, that would be the best time to put the airplane down for the ADSB out and get that done. But mainly it's just gearing up and getting on the schedule and getting on the schedule early because of the delays with not just Universal, but we also deal with Collins and Honeywell and Bendix King as far as getting equipment ordered. So that's the greatest challenge is the operators figuring out what is the good downtime to get this scheduled in as soon as possible. We're quoting projects for first quarter of 19 right now. With that kind of workload ahead and a mandate that doesn't seem likely to move at this point, Francetic says it's time to innovate. So SoCal Jets has come up with a new plan designed to greatly reduce both the workload and the downtime associated with ADSB out installations. The basis of the program is to install a universal-based FMS system in conjunction with a Honeywell or a Collins transponder and comply with ADSB in the quickest way possible. Universal has made a tremendous amount of data that we can use in reference to STCs and installation work so that we can facilitate easier installation by installing less equipment, which makes the turn time quicker. A typical installation for ADSB and Part 25 aircraft can take two to three weeks. With this program, we use the latest advancements from Universal and the latest software upgrades we're able to implement these installations in the aircraft down to 
three-day installation time. Now, let's be clear. This three-day installation program only puts aircraft in compliance with the ADSB out requirement. Aircraft will eventually need to be equipped with other facets of next-gen, like fans or future air navigation systems, WAS LPV, control pilot data link communications, and the sort. And in SoCalJet's case, you pay a premium for that three-day turnaround. But Debbie Carpenter, executive director of the Southern California Aviation Association, says... Definitely more companies will have to do this in order to complete this by 2020. And even still, Francetic tells me... I think there will be some airplanes left behind that will have to fly around by different means or through a ferry permit to get this done. It doesn't appear that there's enough capacity right now in the industry to support all the needs of the airplanes. For more information about the SoCal Jets Incorporated program, contact them at socaljets.aero. And you'll find a tremendous amount of information about NextGen in general, and ADSB in particular, on the NBAA website. Go to nbaa.org slash ops slash CNS. And that's the latest from the National Business Aviation Association. Remember, you can subscribe to all Flight Plan podcasts at Apple's iTunes website or download them from nbaa.org. I'm Pete Combs. Thanks for listening to Flight Plan. <music>